I think RMT programs really benefit from measurement of MIP and MEP uh, to, to determine candidacy for RMT, measure response, establish the amount of resistance that might be appropriate, uh, determine change over time. Uh, for, for individual, for, for programs that are interested in um, early changes in respiratory muscle strength, uh, MIP and MEP are also really valuable. They're much more sensitive in spirometry, spirometry endpoints. Uh, to early change to early changes in respiratory muscle strength, early declines in, in respiratory function, we picked up f earlier with declines in MIP and MEP uh, before they will in, in changes in spirometry. So you have to lose a lot in spirometry before it'll show up. Uh, and and just it's I think important to know that MIP is increased in particular MIP because it's so closely linked to functional capacity and morbidity and mortality that it's increasingly used as a functional and, and clinically meaningful trial endpoint in neuromuscular diseases. Uh, and Schoeser et al. have a really interesting 2017 article about that uh, and just reviewing that uh, topic. Okay, so one more time here. Uh, no slips on. Nice tight seal with your lips. Push all the air out of your lungs. When your lungs are totally empty, suck it in hard and fast. Give it all you got. Go, 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 and stop. Excellent. Good effort. Ah, nice. 86. Very good. So obviously by this point, uh, I hope it's clear that I think uh, MIP testing and MEP testing for that matter is really important. Um, I, th I think it'll be worthwhile to, and profitable to spend just a little bit more time um, watching um, some individuals perform these maneuvers and uh, you know, observing the cues that are provided. Um, so uh, next we will see uh, Nate, age 13, performing uh, the MIP, then Jack, age nine, uh, performing the MIP maneuver, and then finally Haley, age six, performing this, the same maneuver. Uh, and finally, RMT concept number six, um, it, it, the ability to quantify dose uh, is a huge opportunity with RMT. Uh, so, and we, we sometimes have a hard time really capturing the, the, the dose of our interventions. But um, if we know how much resistance we're providing, then um, we, the other aspects of dose we can really capture with RMT. And we can really know how much of a, of a dose we're providing. So if we know that someone's training at 30 centimeters of inspiratory resistance, um, and they're performing, you know, three sets of 25 repetitions, three days a week, um, then that allows us to really zero in on exactly uh, the dose of inspiratory muscle training uh, we are providing in that patient. And then if, if they're responding or not responding, uh, we can adjust accordingly. If, in that, if we have that same situation, and we don't really know what the amount of resistance is, then it's a, it's a key variable that makes understanding the patient response much more difficult. So um, when, we're, when, we, when we're doing respiratory muscle training and we don't, when we miss this opportunity to quantify dose, um, it's a, just a huge missed opportunity. The swallow might be affected, and I think you could include cough with that. Uh, and I think swallowing um, is a common indication for respiratory muscle training in, in my experience uh, based on the literature and again my own clinical experience and I think cough is as well I think cough can be uh, again based on the literature and my own experience cough can be negatively influenced by both inspiratory weakness and expiratory muscle weakness as well as uh, ball bar muscle weakness um, we can also think about speech uh, being a therapeutic target for RMT, uh, maybe especially the voice. Uh, we could think about other processes and functions, maybe maybe airway patency, uh, dyspnea, breathing, even or sleep breathing, even even blood pressure. So, again, other processes or functions that might be a therapeutic target of RMT. Uh, blood pressure has been shown to be positively influenced by respiratory muscle training. So uh, respiratory muscle training will result in uh, decreases in uh, blood pressure. Um, other important things to consider during this first RMT session, you know, after five repetitions, we typically query their self-perceived level of effort. 
Uh, so we want them to, to rate their perceived effort uh, using a t zero to 10 scale. Um, we've often used uh, you know zero to be no work at all and 10 to be the hardest work they can do. And um, you know we typically like effort ratings to, to be pretty modest. So a patient who's you know working at a nine, uh, eight, nine, or 10, uh, that may be, may be too much effort. And that may be a good time for us to back off a little bit. Uh, it's also really important to observe your patient, you know, looking at things, how, how successful are they with RMT? Um, do they have difficulty coordinating their breathing for the exercise? And that's why they're not successful? Or is it just because of the pressure threshold resistance is too great? You know, additionally, sometimes patients, uh, you know, rating of uh, perceived effort uh, doesn't really match with what we observe. So a patient says, this is uh, so easy, it's two out of 10, but you know, they're breaking out in a, in a sweat and working very hard, they're, they're flushed. Um, that may be another good indicator that, you know, this is a little too intensive and we need to back off a little bit. And we, we certainly wanna inquire regarding any negative side effects, whether there's shortness of breath, uh, color change, sweating, pain, dizziness, lightheadedness. And it's important to trust your clinical judgment. Uh, to back off or to push patients, kind of depending on on uh, how they're responding and our, our, our clinical history with them.